Uh, Ed, thank you so much for joining us today. So for anybody that's seeing this um, or kind of got access to us for the first time, Hack Mankind is a community uh, put together to dispel fear and provide people with accurate information and access to experts like um, Ed Lay, who we have with us today. Ed is our health, nutrition, fitness general. Uh, guru is a horrible word, but let's go for guru. Um, so Ed, what's your background and why are you qualified to talk to people about this? I love the word guru um, because it means dispeller of darkness, moving from darkness to light. But anyway, that is not what qualifies me. Um, the, uh, I guess 2004, I did a degree in sports conditioning, coaching and rehabilitation. And uh, I guess I learned a whole lot of stuff about, uh, about how the body works and, and, and how to fix certain things and, uh, you know, things about nutrition and exercise. Uh, but then over the years, I learned a neuroscience understanding of health and fitness that I layered over the top that changed my beliefs about everything that I'd learned um, from university and allowed me to have a much greater impact of working in each of those areas. So the way that I work with pain and nutrition and exercise was fundamentally changed when I put this filter over the top of it. It changed the meaning of everything underneath. So I still talk about all of the aspects of health, but I change um, the responses that I give based on the nervous system or the way the nervous system is responding over the top of that so what that essentially means is that you and i could eat exactly the same things and have a very different experience of it based on the experience of life that we were having okay that makes a lot of sense so one of the questions that we got asked and it isn't turmeric lattes that isn't that isn't the question we asked so we're walking we're obviously in a you know, we can't not talk about COVID-19. That is what this whole period of life is about. Um, we have something that experts think, most experts think quite a few people are going to catch um, because it's so contagious um, and it's so contagious for so when it's when you're asymptomatic. So let's start with that. What is asymptomatic? Basically, it just means that you can have it without experiencing the, the symptoms of. So you may not present with the symptoms. So you could have something and then pass it on to somebody else. Okay. So, I mean, that, but that's a, and it's a really easy distinction, but it's a word that people keep using, this word asymptomatic. So I just wanted to make sure everyone's aware. So what we're talking about with COVID-19 is a virus that you can have and for up to 14 days, it's believed, but we're not totally clear on it because the science is still new around it. You can infect people without showing signs of it. So there's a good chance that you'll be exposed to this because people are out and about or have been out and about touching things, breathing things, sneezing, coughing, etc. And the world is therefore full of this virus. So let's work on an assumption that you're going to get it. So everybody hopes they're not going to get it but if you're going to get it what would you recommend so if i told you ed i know that in 10 days i'm going to display some sort of covid19 what would you advise me now yeah well it's a fantastic question and uh, really points to the way that i like to work with people is that um, diagnoses aren't necessarily that useful for people it's great that, that we're doing testing, for example, but when we diagnose someone with a particular problem, it isn't necessarily that useful because what we tend to do is then zero in on that problem and say, I have this problem, but the rest of me is fine. And that is almost never true. And so I have a virus, but I'm perfectly healthy otherwise, is almost never true. Right? Um, granted, many people haven't built up the antibodies for these thing, this particular thing. So it means that a lot of people are susceptible to it. And, and that's you know, the reason that we're doing different levels of isolation. And I mean, many countries are treating it very, very differently. Uh, I'm in Copenhagen, we're treating it very differently. But 
what you're pointing to on, on what you're asking is how do I create a state where I'm, you know, where I can recover most quickly and not suffer it too much. Mm -hmm. And so first and foremost, we want to make sure that we are well hydrated uh, in advance. So if you say 10 days time, what could I do? Well, the first thing that I would do is make sure that I'm drinking enough water and salts. So I'd start my day drinking a liter of water with a little pinch of rock salt in there. And I'd make sure that I drank a, a couple more throughout the day. And I'd probably use the color of my pee in order to make sure that. Uh, and, and that was, that. So yeah, what is the definition of enough? And I know that you have this test. And it's a little bit graphic, so I apologize to anyone, but it really is, as I understand it, the best way to do it. Yeah, absolutely. So you want something that's um, just slightly green. So it's not completely water. It's not, it doesn't look like water coming out. That's overhydrated, but a, a very, very light green, let's say um, a weak lime cordial. Um, just just a dash the, lime. And the point behind this is effectively the color and the toxicity are the same thing. So if you've got a very dark colored urine, then you're, you're, you've got a lot of toxins inside you that your body's trying to get rid of. So the lighter the color, the more efficiently you've been getting rid of those toxins. Is that right? Essentially, yeah. And, but there's, there's also caveat there is that if your lymphatic system isn't filtering as well as it could, if it isn't removing, you may get this kind of false positive. You know, if your lymphatic system isn't removing waste well, your pee can look clear, but actually you're still not removing waste well. So um, and obviously that's something that I, I teach my clients and we have taught, we've been teaching people in the group both today and throughout the program so far, how they can work with their lymphatic system because the, your immune system only ever really works as well as your lymphatic system is removing things. And you said with a pinch of rock salt, yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, water um, has been drunk for obviously since the beginning of human time. Um, we've been drinking water in order to hydrate ourselves, but but we haven't been in drinking it in it in its form that way um, until recently. It's always had something in it to allow us to absorb it. So, I mean, I use a substance called fulvic acid, which which is essentially um, for one of a, a deeper explanation, it's like dirt. I'm not recommending you add dirt, but it's kind of like the, the, the stuff that's in dirt that helps you absorb uh, water better. And, and since I've been taking that first thing in the morning, I've noticed my absorption of water has been disproportionately better. But rock salt is a really simple thing that you can put in there that will improve the absorption of water, improve the retention of water and uh, stop it just racing through you which which a lot of people find when they start drinking more water they're more thirsty and so it becomes this unquenchability that they just get fed up with and give up in the end okay so um, we've got so we're on the how do we prepare ourselves should the worst case scenario can't happen and we've got we're having COVID in change we have our crystal ball we're going to get it so your first piece of advice right out of the gate hydration key yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is going to be um, stress, right? Because you want your nervous system to to be working in such a way that allows for recovery. And I know that you've had some other amazing speakers um, that will be talking about stress in more detail. You've got spirituality. You've got uh, relationship advisor, parenting advisor, and the specific stresses in those areas. Um, are going to be really important and, and the, the legals and the, the financials and all of those things that are going on at the moment are really, really important, important aspects. Your immune system doesn't work very well if your body isn't in the parasympathetic nervous system, basically in the rest and digest and relax and chill out side of the nervous system enough to allow for repair and restoration. If you're in a fight, flight, or free, freeze response, if you're panicking, if you're overwhelmed, if you're stressed, then your immune system just isn't 
isn't useful at this time because you're trying to get away from lions, tigers, and bears to your brain's concern. So um, limiting, uh, looking and honestly about how you're feeling at the moment and saying, I'm going to not expose myself to too much news and I'm not going to expose myself to too much social media. Um, and I am going to share my feelings with the people that are around me and say, even if, even if as soon as you've said it out loud, you're like, actually, I don't feel like that. Getting used to sharing your feelings and how you're getting on with those that are around you and the things that you really need, because we can't create the world necessarily that we want for ourselves or that we would choose for ourselves. If we've got our kids around us or, you know, if we're, if we're spending more time with our partner than we're used to, and we've got the uncertainty around our jobs and all of those different things, it's going to be affecting our nervous system, which will affect our immune system. So uh, I want to tell just a funny story and then I really want to dig into this because I think it's a really important area. So I went to a doctor once and he said, would you say you lead a stressful life? And I went, absolutely not. And he went, well, from what I can tell here, you've got a child on the way. Um, you're working this many hours. You smoke this much before I started transitioning to vaping. Um, you run your own business. How can you possibly say that? And I said, well, I'm not, I just, I'm not somebody that gets stressed. Um, and he ticked the very stressed box. Um, and I went, what are you doing? And he chuckled and he said, well, the only people that I mark the not stress box are the people that go, eh, well, you know, he said, if anyone says, yes, I am, it means that they probably are. And if someone says, absolutely, I'm not, it just means they're not in touch with the stresses in their life, which is actually more stressful than, than being, you know, so sort of my state of, no, I don't feel stress. It's like, that's ridiculous. You're human. You do feel stress. That's the way stress works. Um, so for even to say it, so for people out there that go, nah, I don't get stressed, you really need to pay attention. But the thing I wanted to really drill into, because this is kind of one of the core concepts of Hack Mankind, is that fear equals stress, stress equals a reduced immune system, a reduced immune system equals you don't, you're in trouble right now. Um, so we obviously get this disconnect. I was reading a book once that said, you know, where the, where the origins of dualism comes from, the fact that we see our mind and our body as very separate entities, but in actual fact, at a physiological level, they're very, very connected. So can, can you help me in, in terms of, can we drill into that? Because I think a lot of people hear what you just said and go, yeah, you know, and, and don't really see how linked together your stress and your fear and your state of mind and your immune system really are. So can we, can, is there ways we, is, I mean, do we have any science on that? Can we, can we walk into that a bit more? Often? There's um, me and my family absolutely love going to Copenhagen zoo and this um, we run into problems inside companies, but as individuals, this is a really useful way of doing it. Um, recently we went to Copenhagen Zoo and they had a sign um, on the polar bear enclosure and what they were telling us was the experience that one of the polar bears had been having and that they would noted it and that they were going to be doing something about it and it was really interesting and uh, my wife and I were talking about it we were, we were really impressed because we would noticed the polar bears stress uh, the last time we were there and the way we notice stress in animals is very different to how we notice it in humans. But it isn't really because we are animals. It's just what we're allowed to say is different for humans, right? We run into the ethics of it all. But if an animal stops drinking in a way that supports health and stops eating in a way that supports health, and stops sleeping in a way that supports health, and stops connecting with those around it in a way that supports health, we know that that animal is already stressed and they have a problem, right? Whereas in humans, we go, we will wait until there is a negative consequence and we will separate it, right? So if an animal goes, oh, it doesn't say, I've got back pain, right? because it doesn't have the human construct around the fact that men aren't allowed to have stress, but 
but they are allowed to have pain, right? So 97% of injury doesn't have incident to it. You know, we have this pain for no reason. And it's because our nervous system is in a fight, flight, or freeze response so frequently that our body is now producing pain. And um, so pretty much every time we say, I want to behave like this, but I'm behaving like this, we're exhibiting a sign of stress. And so if we can honestly say, um, in all areas of my life, I'm doing what I said I would do, consistently doing what I said I do, then you're not experiencing stress. But if you're basically winning, let's say, if you're doing what you said you do in physical health, in mental health, in all of your relationships, in your finances, in your happiness, in your inspiration and your purpose and every area of your life, if you broke it down and said, here's where I'm growing in this area, here are the forward steps I'm taking and I'm consistently doing it, that's low stress. Everybody else is experiencing stress. Okay. So, and how does that then equate to a reduced immune system? The way that our immune system works is, in, is in, with everything else, with our lymphatic system and with our blood flow and with our nervous system. So we take in information from the outside world and then our brain interprets that information and then we get the action output. But the, the bit in between that interpretation and the action output is our auto and uh, autonomic nervous system. So our autonomic nervous system basically says, um, based on this circumstance, this environment, and the things that I believe about this environment, you are best served by this branch of your nervous system or this branch of your nervous system. So this branch, that is fight, flight, freeze, fuck, food, and focus. So you need this branch of your nervous system if you are best served by tunnel vision, acute hearing, immune system not functioning, organs not needing to be um, doing much work, blood flow going to your strong muscles so that you can fight or flight. Let's not say the, that other F word again. <laughs> oh, done. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other side of the nervous system, we have the parasympathetic branch of the nervous system. And this is future based. So I can rest, digest, consolidate my memory. I can um, repair and I can relax. And all of those things, they're what we would call growth. And all of these things are what we would call protection. So my nervous system, based on the surroundings, my brain believes that I need to be in protection mode. And over here, my brain believes that I can be in a growth mode. And if I'm too long in protection mode, I just don't get to do enough growth stuff. Um, children, are if they're in happy, healthy homes, will make sure they're in this area, right? They'll sleep more if they need it and they'll just completely relax on the sofa if they need it because they haven't picked up this obligation construct that, that adults have, right? So we will say, um, at the moment, it is more important that I stay up and watch the telly and worry than it is that I go to sleep or I have to get this done so it trumps sleep or this value. So we build a value hierarchy across our lives that sometimes puts the stuff that needs to be done above our health. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and reword what you said into a different language because you and I have been talking this for about 10 years and, <laughs> and I think I started to get it recently. Um, and it's, and it's not because I'm looking to correct anything you said, because everything you said is I totally understand, but just to make sure there's different access points for different people listening. Sure. So here's my way of, of saying what you just said. 
our body and brain is inherently the same machine as it was 100,000, 200,000 years ago. We've added on all this technology and buildings and TVs and Netflix and iPhones, but the actual underlying chemistry is still the same thing that was, as you said, tigers and caves. So we don't have uh, our modern version of stress is brought about by all these wonderful new things that we've invented and this obligation, but our brain and our body has yet to evolve to a stage where it can handle it differently to the old stresses it used to have. So let's look at an old stress. You see a tiger, right? That, that is a, 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 and your body, your brain, your chemistry immediately kicks in, your amygdala kicks in and goes, wow, okay, there's a tiger. I'm gonna release adrenaline. I'm gonna start breathing shallow into the top of my lungs to change my oxygenation to my, to my muscles. I'm gonna cut off um, sim things like my immune system, things like my kidney, my liver, my spleen. None of these things matter anymore. All that matters is giving my muscles as much capability and my senses as much capability to get myself away from the tiger. And then when you get yourself into a cave, you sit there, your adrenaline then becomes cortisol, um, which is the post-cursor, pre-post-cursor of what adrenaline becomes, which tells your body, okay, that immediate thing has now satiated. It's gone, the tiger's gone, I'm now safe. You then sleep, cortisol burns down, and the whole growth side of the, the healthy side of it happens again. Um, so that's kind of the way I look at it, and you can tell me I'm wrong or right, but it's essentially the news now is what was a tiger a hundred thousand years ago. Our brain really can't distinguish between the two. It goes, ah, oh, I don't know what to do with this. So you end up in that stress fight flight type mode to something that you can't actually then respond to. Does that kind of make sense? Is that a, a, a way to Yeah, it? absolutely. Yeah. So you've touched on uh, a, a really important aspect of it there, which is, um, the the life or death aspect that is that is real life or death, right? But um, the bit that we're missing there, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the, the the metaphor of the triune brain. And the metaphor of the triune brain is we've got a reptilian brain that was there first, um, with the uh, we'll say the the five Fs, and then on top of that we've got the mammalian brain. And the mammalian brain that evolved um, in order to allow us to to live together in in tribes and connect with each other. And this mammalian part of our brain it contains a, a part of the brain called the anterior cingular cortex. And what that part of our brain does is it asks the same question over and over and over again, the same two questions: Who do I love, and who loves me? And this part of our brain is the default mode network, we call it, because it's constantly running and it measures our level of acceptance, connection and care with those people around us all of the time. So those behaviors where we start trumping our um, health, actual health needs and our security needs um, with value based things is based on who's going to judge me about this who who is going to negatively judge me who's going to criticize me or who um who in whose eyes am i failing to meet the expectations of others and then and that to link that back for everybody the reason this evolved so it, there's a great book on this by matt lieberman called social uh, which refers to your social brain the default network and obviously we can't know scientifically but the reason this is believed to exist is again, we go back 100,000 years ago, being ejected from your tribe was, was the same as dying. You know, if, if, yeah. if you're going to get chucked out of your tribe, you will die because humans back then didn't have the capability to exist. But so our need for tribes, you can argue, debate whether it still exists or not. I would probably say it does. But in your brain, it certainly does still exist. Your brain is still going, am I being accepted and loved by the people around me? Yes or no? Because if I'm not, I'm in trouble right now because I could get ejected from my tribe. Is that? That is, yeah, that's absolutely right. And if we, uh, if we think about it as well, the fact that we're in, we're in loads of tribes now. You know, I grew up, I didn't grow up, let's say from the age of about 15 to 22, 
in pubs in my local village, the hierarchy inside the tribe was, how much do you smoke and do you smoke? And how much do you drink and do you drink, right? And those things were prize values. And you could take those two behaviors, walk down the street to your mates who play lots of football, and now those two values may be socially unacceptable here. And we're all in loads and loads of different tribes and, and social media. It's so polarizing because the time we spend on social media, we go, oh, well, I'm friends with them, but they believe this. So I need to hide that aspect to myself. And I need to hide this aspect to myself with these people and hide this aspect to myself with these people. And we think there's something wrong with that, but it's not because it's how our brain has evolved to go. Here's how you need to operate with these people. And all of that just becomes hugely overwhelming, which results in the wrong side of our, or the, not the wrong side, the fight or flight side of our nervous system operating so much of the time because we're trying to work out how to navigate this new world based on who do I need to be for whom. And, and I think, I, I always swear I never want to go near politics in any of these conversations, but if you want evidence of this, Currently, the most powerful man in the world was able to justify a pretty heinous sentence by going, oh, it's just locker room banter. Now, this is exactly what that is. And again, I don't want to get into a politics conversation, but that sentence was said because every guy listening to this that's ever been in a locker room knows that some of those conversations are really not acceptable and they're slightly colorful. And, and it's, it's a try. You go, oh, OK, yeah, I can relate to that. Whether it was right or wrong, good or bad, let's not go there. But it's such evidence and and it's why you touched on social media it's why social media is so successful because it's very very good at only presenting you things that agree with you um so it it performs the other side of that equation for you hey you like um working out here's lots of videos and people that like working out you like politics here's the things that agree with your politics view okay so let's just track this through then so we've got just to recap we've got drink water and drink water until you P is roughly clear and make sure your lymphatic system is working to keep all of those toxins going around so they can be drained out, number one. Number two, from our uh, health calls that we do, your lymphatic system does not have a pump. So if you're not regularly moving, uh, what's NEAT, the acronym? Mm. Um, it is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Right. Basically, all of the stuff you do when you're not actually doing active exercise. Um, so if you're not walking around and moving a lot, your lymphatic system can start getting bogged down and can get blocked. And it's really simple to unblock it. It's literally a case of walking through all the little nodules, heating them up and giving them a little bit of, of irritation, a tiny amount to force the, the flow to carry on go. So drink lots, have your lymph system working. And then what we've just kind of covered is fear equals stress. Stress equals your body deliberately, not accidentally, changing the way it operates and walking away from an immune system saying i can worry about that later because what i need right now is muscles working at full power i need my eyesight more acute and you did a great exercise on this the other day um which again is on our 9 a.m calls 9 a.m eastern so for those who don't know www.hackmankind.com Go there, 14 day free trial, join and you get to see this amazing man give 15, 20 minutes of, of true value to you every day. So one of the things we did the other day, which I loved, was try and bend down and touch your toes and then literally just do an exercise of awakening up your um, peripheral vision by following your own thumb. It's like a six second exercise and then try and touch your toes again. And you go further right, because, you're, because your nervous system, you can finish this off for me, your nervous system feels then you're safe. Yeah, essentially, um, you know, if you take things back to um, what I said before, which was uh, information, sensory information, interpretation, output. When we increased the sensory information and we aided the interpretation, then we got a better output, right? So challenging the peripheral vision that was basically responded to, you woke up in the morning and you'd saw the news and this at the corner of your eye and you're worried about this and you're worried about that. And you looked at your phone and you read all of those things and all of that led to 
your eyesight creeping in and in and in. And all we did was opened up the peripheral vision, challenged it, and then the brain went, I can see more. I've opened up my peripheral vision. I must be safer and allowed for more range of movement. The same thing, right? The same thing goes for a hug, right? When you have a hug, your brain goes, I feel safe, right? Because you just wouldn't hug if you weren't safe. So the brain goes, here's some human contact. This is obviously safe. It opens up the range of motion. So yeah, I mean, in the morning workouts, we'll deal with a lot of things to help calm that nervous system down. Because the great thing about the nervous system is that it, got, it fires up immediately. You see something threatening and that threat fires up the immune system, sorry, fires up the nervous system so that you can fight, flight or freeze immediately so that you can save yourself. But it takes a really long time to come down. And you mentioned the transition there of adrenaline and cortisol and, it, and it's slowly winding down. And, uh, and, it, and it's designed that way, right? Because the, yeah. what needs to happen quickly is, you know, is, is, is muscular and sensory capability. You need that now. Um, your body doesn't need to get rid of it straight away, traditionally, because you don't see a tiger every five minutes. Right? But, but nowadays we are seeing a tiger every five minutes. So you're never then leaving that mode. And for those that know me, I carry a lot of weight on my stomach because one of the things that, I fail to understand for decades of my life is this link between stress and cortisol because I was sleeping poorly through my work. I wasn't paying the attention to myself. I wasn't paying attention to my family, my friend, my relationships. I was constantly on stress mode. So I constantly had a buildup of cortisol um, and you, you can see cortisol a mile off. If you see people carrying weight on their stomach, it's normally a good sign of cortisol buildup which you can only reduce, as I understand it, through sleep. I mean, there's literally, there's no other way to do it. I mean, people are still trying to find a magic pill to help with cortisol reduction. It just kind of doesn't exist. It's go to sleep. Seems to be about the only way to do it. Because again, it's back to the hug type mentality of if you sleep, you must be safe. Your body would not let you sleep if the tiger was still outside the cave. Yeah, I mean, I would say if there's going to be... Um... If there's going to be things that you would see if this person was less stressed, it would be those things. But, um, you know, what I would fundamentally want to do is go back to um, looking at stressors and, and what, uh, what you believe about the world, right? It would, it would be looking more deeply at your beliefs and the things that uh, your mental constructs around things and, and, start unpicking all of those so that um, your nervous system is only um, giving you fight or flight responses when it is strictly necessary to give you them. Okay. So we're back to, I'm getting COVID in nine and a half days now. Um, yep. So I have, I've drunk lots of, I've drunk my water on a regular basis. Good, good point. Thanks very much. Um, I've started to work on my stress levels and now what do you want me to do? What do I want you to do? Um, I want you to um, clean your house. Um, and clean I house. want you, yep. Yeah, and I want you to look after your personal hygiene in a way that is um, going into the mirror and going, this is how I like myself to best look and making sure you take care of those things. Um, so our, our actions follow our feelings and our feelings are a response to our environment. So the environments that we can control, we need to control them as much as we can there's a huge benefit in clean in cleaning in that you're moving, but you want to make sure that your the environment of your home is one that makes you feel how you want to feel. And the environment of your, the skin you're in is the same. And the environment of the clothes that you're wearing are the same. There's such a temptation being stuck at home at the moment to just go, I'm going to shower every third day 
and I'm just going to wear the same clothes every day. I'll get out of bed. I'm going to sit in my boxer shorts on the sofa. I'm not going to dress for work. Um, there's loads of funny memes going on around that was like uh, me on Zoom work day one, me on Zoom work day 14, and like a uh, completely different level of hygiene in between. But um, setting up your environment, that's going to be a really, really important one. Um, setting up your environment to serve you, like your clothes, your home, and uh, and your, it, let's call it personal hygiene, but it could be, you know, your haircut and um, shaving and, you know, and anything that you go, I like this best when it looks like this, doing those, those little things for yourself. So we're back to the concept that duality doesn't really exist. We're, we're back to looking after your mind health is as important, if not more important than looking after your body health. If we're looking at the terms of your nervous system creates your responses, your nervous system is a response to your environment. I know that I get, I get really stressed if my environment isn't tidy. It's the first thing I do when I walk in the door is tidy up after my kids and, and not yell at them because it's not their problem that I get stressed by. It's mine, right? So I tidy up and eventually... It will annoy them when it's not tidy. <laughs> you they, fingers crossed. <laughs> fingers, fingers crossed, indeed. <laughs> yeah, mine, for me, um, I obviously, I mean, for those that don't know, we launched Hat Mankind a week ago, and the two weeks before that were just really poor form for me in terms of my health. And I, I pushed every button I could to get things live and done. And, and I would make that choice again a hundred times because the people we're supporting through this, I wanted to support and I want to support them now, not in two weeks time. Well, obviously I want to support them in two weeks time, but I wanted to get ahead. Sure. You know, I saw a, a viral epidemic, um, whatever the, the, a really smart person around viruses. How do you say that? Epidemiologist. Word? That one. Um, and it was last night and it was, it was really scary, but it was validating everything I thought was going to happen. And he basically had a graph. He's like, this is the, it was an uh, American broadcast. This is the healthcare capacity. This is the growth of reported cases of COVID-19 that need hospital care. Um, and he said, we're here. And in eight days, this goes above this. Um, and he said, and, and no government initiative, no um, addition of charitable giving. There's nothing now that can solve this. this. This train is on the way because of that asymptomatic thing we spoke about at the beginning. You know, sure. These are people that now already do have it. There's not, we can't do anything about this. So in eight days time, this number goes above this number. And when that happens, then people that have heart attacks or strokes can't get the care they need, let alone the people with COVID-19. The people that just had a road traffic accident that normally would be put them into an enforced coma, give them this, that, and the other drug, and they're going to be okay. Now we don't have a bed and a ventilator for them. Um, so I'm more than happy with the choice I made to get Hat Mankind live before we get to that, because that's the point where I think people are really going to truly need what we're talking about and all this support that we're doing. So that was okay. But what I found was last Saturday, I couldn't solve something that normally I'd be able to solve really easily. And I looked at it and went, well, what, why, what's going wrong here? And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I've been operating in stress and adrenaline for 10 days. And that is great for solving certain types of problem. And it sucks at solving other types of problems. So when you need a creative space, being stressed and being on adrenaline does not help. Creativity needs reflection and introspection and time and love and family and energy and watching a film or going for a walk. So I made a really conscious effort on Saturday. For me, the one thing I know to be true is if I sleep well, then all of my other decisions become dominoes from that one decision. So if I sleep well and I wake up on time in the morning, my first instinct is to have a shower and then go and walk the dog. Um, and the walking the dog then gives me 30, 45 minutes of exercise and air and oxygen. Whereas if I work till four o'clock in the morning, even if I then sleep till midday, so I'm still getting eight hours of sleep, my first instinct is to go downstairs and get cereal and then sit on the sofa. It is not to have a shower, get going at my day and start making good choices. 
and every good choice you make tends to lead to another good choice and for me anyway and for every bad choice you make unless you're being very conscious it leads to another bad choice and this is something that i i've tried to push on many times is if you had to put these in order sleep nutrition water and i'm going to do it again on camera if you had to put them on order, sleep nutrition hydration and exercise where would you put them if um you put them in reverse order and you said if i stopped exercising i would die in you'd come up with a whole load of years right so if i stopped exercising it would be years if i stopped eating it would be months if i stopped drinking it would be weeks if i stopped sleeping it would be days if i stopped breathing it would be moments and that's the way that's, that i tend to look at it that's a good way to answer it i can't argue that one um okay so we've only got a few minutes left so then we haven't talked about breathing so i i i know it's dragon breathing but breathing from your belly when you see kids breathe in bed they breathe deeply whereas we tend to breathe shallowly and i understand that's to do with stress as well yeah um and quite often um let's say the caveat allergies sensitivities um blocked noses all of those things can cause you to not breathe through your nose so nose tends to result in diaphragmatic deep diaphragmatic breathing um we get more circulation of red blood cells um we get core stability from breathing from our diaphragm and we get enough oxygen to our brain and we absorb it because of the nitric oxide in our nose um when we don't get enough oxygen um again that's one of the ingredients of stress is breathing through your mouth you end up with um teeth problems mouth problems bacteria problems your shoulders start taking care of breathing you lose core stability you don't get enough oxygen to your brain and if you're a brain and you're not getting enough oxygen you tend to send panic right you tend to say this stuff isn't going right so you take away exercise from this person yeah because it just isn't safe anymore and uh, so the uh, the one of the primary focuses that that we're going to be working on is making sure that there's di deep diaphragmatic breathing that we're getting enough oxygen that we're not over breathing at the same time it's just a really important subject to discuss um, and i think also on top of that isn't there uh, uh, something i read once and it's always good to check aren't there receptors at the bottom of your lungs that don't exist at the top of your lungs and vice versa so i think oh, well, there's... At the top of your lungs actually it tells your body i'm in adrenaline mode that's a very good question i think you may be right but i don't know for certain Okay. I think I read it yeah you know, somewhere that the receptors in the bottom of our lungs um tell our body you are no longer under stress you're no longer in adrenaline mode um which is why when you sleep you tend to breathe deeply into or one of the you know you tend to breathe deeply into your lungs. Um Sure, I would say that it makes it, it makes a huge amount of sense, yeah. Um but but I don't know for certain. I know that there's uh, also, there's a lot going said, on at the bottom of the lungs. Also, as you said they're triangles, right? So the the volume at the bottom <laughs> is, yeah. is is I don't know the number, but it's a multiplier of the volume at the top. Sure, absolutely, and, and it releases the red blood cells, and we need all of that to be circulating to be producing producing the health that we want for ourselves. Are there simple? I don't exercises? know if we've gone. Yeah, there are very simple exercises you can do, but at the same time, um, anticipation makes us. uh chest breathe and anticipation is checking our phone watching the television watching the news it causes anticipation i challenge you to next time you look at your phone check if you're holding your breath while you go through your social medias and your phone and, and your emails and stuff wow. i'd be really surprised if you weren't wow that's an important one uh, something we touched on our on our group call the other day uh was the importance of you know just in a tight slightly different realm but when we're in we were in relationship space of making sure that we're turning off our phone um yeah you're back ah. uh, um 
and it's something, yeah, I think it's something you're quite good at. I, I'm quite, you know, most phones now have a do not disturb function at night to stop all the beeps and all the stuff. And I think there's something that there's something, and this is the reason that I really wanted you on board with this because there are, we've said this before, there's lots and lots of people doing, you know, here's an exercise, here's a core exercise, here's an upper body exercise. There's lots of that, and I'm not dismissing it. And if people want to get into that, that's phenomenal. There's great resources out there at the moment of people that are doing work for free and trying to help people. But it was uh, your TED talk, I think, where you, you started talking about this in detail. Because when I first met you, you were, excuse the phrase, a more traditional gym owner, personal trainer than you are now. Um, sure. And your evolution, as you've kind of seen more of this, is to walk slightly away from that and go, that's all wonderful, but actually change the way you breathe, change the way you, you, you know, get information in. So you change your stress levels, all these things, these tiny, and you know, I'm referring back to our name, these tiny hacks actually add up to a much better version of a healthier you than go to the gym once every two days and do a 45 minute, you know, deadlift squat type thing. And if you like that, please do it. If you're in an environment where right now you can, but, more importantly, I think is focused on some of these these small things, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's our brain is always responding to data, and if the data that it's got at the moment is you've got this amount of oxygen circulating and this amount of nitric oxide circulating and this amount of nutrients circulating, and but this is uh, the lymphatic system is toxic, and we're operating from this branch of our nervous system, which means the instruction is don't worry about the future, let's survive now, then everything about your health is going to go wrong, regardless of whether you have an exercise habit or a celery habit or whatever. doesn't matter. But if you go, I'm going to get my nervous system right and I'm going to get my breathing right and I'm going to get my lymphatic system right, then the brain's going to start going, okay, we have an internal and external environment that best supports health. And then the movement just tends to appear, just like it does in polar bears in Copenhagen Zoo, don't have a workout schedule, right? And no animal has a workout schedule. They just go about their lives in an automated way because their internal environment, their external environment supports producing health. Yeah, and if and my, you're don't go. Yeah, sorry, I said, yeah, you know, my dog yesterday went on a five minute crazy. Right. And, and every so often, even if we walk it every so often, it will just literally run the length of the house or the length of the garden and get to one end and run to the other side of it as often as you can. It's, and as you said, it's just, it's not habit. It's just instinct for him to go, I need to stretch. I need to move. I need to do stuff. So he just does. He just literally just runs like a crazy man or a crazy dog. Yeah. Children do the same thing, right? And until we discipline them into uh, moving once they do the thing that's important to us. Discipline, that's a word in air quotes, right? That's, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so one of the things I wanted to just point out as we come to an end, um, and this is probably not me asking you a question when we're talking, is I read something fascinating the other day that they, they measured um, top 100 meter sprinters, um, both male and female, um, and the quickest time that people responded to the gun going off was 175 milliseconds and these are people that have trained all of their life for these were olympians these are people that have trained to stand on that start line and go when it's go time and even with them it's 175 milliseconds for most people it's 350 milliseconds a third of a second and they then looked at they put them under a functional mri fmri and looked at the movement of the brain and the energy and saw what was happening and the amygdala is the very first thing that receives everything that comes into your head and its only job is to say is this stimulus a threat or not that's its its pure job is as they understand it is to just distinguish between something that's threatening and something that isn't and if it's threatening we kick off the systems we just spoke about and if it's not threatening it then puts it through to the rest of the brain for visual recognition audio recognition and all the other stuff that goes on so the reason i wanted to just bring this up for everybody is my kind of profound moment is that means that we live our lives a third of a second behind our lives, which is a really weird thought for me, right? Because 
I, I'm used to the fact that an episode of Friends that I watched was filmed 10 years ago. I understand that when I'm watching a soccer game or a football game, even if it's live, it still took 10 seconds to get to me. So in when I consume media, the concept that my life isn't real time makes total sense. But the thought that my own life isn't real time, by the time I have said these words to you, they were already said, throws me. And the reason I wanted to bring this up here is because this is the reason all these, these exercises that we speak about, doing this stuff in advance is so important. Your conscious brain can't make the decision as to whether these things are a threat and how it's going to respond because it's already responded. By the time your conscious brain becomes aware that you've watched the news and 100,000 people have died from the coronavirus, whatever it might be, your body, your, your amygdala has already decided if this is a threat. You can't reverse that. You can't go, no, I'm going to consciously decide to not be at stress with this. You can start helping that, but you need to have worked in advance to set the system up so the system works well when it then receives it. I think it's such an important point to because our brain is a tool. We can use it and we can focus it at multiple things, but it is just a tool. The other systems that you've just been describing, we need to work with them in advance so that they're ready when something comes about. Is that a fair scenario? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there have been other studies that have shown that, um, I mean, if I told you, asked you to stand on one leg, you would stand on the same one leg every time until I pointed out that you always stand on the same one leg and then you choose the other one, right? Just because just because you like to prove me wrong. Um, but um, but that sec what we know at the moment is that that decision to stand on one leg was made nine seconds ago before I asked the question almost, right? Um, so when you go to a junction, when you walk up to a junction and you think you're deciding whether to turn left or right, you decided nine seconds ago whether to turn left or right. And the only reason we believe it's nine seconds ago is because technology hasn't advanced enough to prove that it is sooner, but it is far sooner. We have made almost all of our decisions in advance because because when that bullet went out of the gun, does it go out of a gun? When the sprinters went on the B the of bang. Of, it's called the starter's gun anyway, yeah. When yeah. the bang happens. Yeah. Fight, flight, or freeze was decided nine seconds in advance or much further in advance on what you would do. It's only because the sprinter knows it's safe that they cognitively decided earlier to make that decision but but whether you if if all of us heard a gun fight gunfire it's probably not a good example because we're all triggered by noise but if when we all experience some sort of immediate threat in our environment we don't all choose running 100 meters as fast as we can right some of us choose fight some of us choose flight some of us choose freeze and those things were decided years ago yeah, and you see it in professional sports is a really good place to look for it because you see, you know, professional motor car drivers do the opposite when you turn into a corner than we would do. Because, and, and I love these examples because when it comes to health and nutrition, it's the same thing. You have to train it in advance so that when it's then presented with the right thing, it does the thing you want it to do. You can't do it at the time. So this, and the reason I'm, I'm banging this point is because if we live in a world which we do, where there is a virus that has an eight out of 10 infection rate, and if you need to leave your house for any reason, you are going to be put in a place where you are with a virus that has an eight out of 10 infection rate. You touch your face 300 times a day on average. You know, the, the chance of people getting this is higher than the chance of you not getting it. So as much as social distancing needs to be done to look after other people, as much as we need to talk about PPE for nurses and doctors and EMTs and all that stuff we're doing, you also need to take a, a second view, a backup view of, okay, if I'm going to get this, how do I need to prepare for this? Um, and 
I think a lot of people aren't having that conversation. Whenever I look at news or social media, it's these many people have died, these many people have recovered, you know, why don't we have more masks for nurses, doctors? All this is true and all of it's valid, but there's very, very little attention paid from, you know, the outreach of governments, you know, the CDC, the NHS to, this is actually, you know, I, living in the UK, I have not heard the NHS say to me, your level of hydration is as important as your self-isolation. So please self-isolate, but please drink truckloads of water because we really only want you to be ill for four days, not five or six. And we really don't want you to come into hospital. So we'd really like it if you just had a flu and pneumonia, not you end up with 80% fibrosis of your lungs. Um, and it, it amazes me that that isn't being talked about more, which is why I kind of wanted to go into it so deeply with you. For anybody that listens to this, your immune system is totally and utterly a manifestation of your sleep, of your hydration, of your environment, and more important than any of those maybe, or certainly as importantly, is the amount that you live under stress. So you need to choose, as Ed's gone, please watch the back through this, to, to, to not live in a state of fear, so you don't live in a state of stress, so you can, be, you can hopefully be healthy. And Tiffany Persons, one of the people involved in Hat Mankind, was actually on the front lines of Ebola and in Sierra Leone. And her belief has always been that the key to third world countries pulling themselves out of poverty is to look internally as much as externally. It's not necessarily just about money and aid. It's about state of mind and not living in fear and showing gratitude for the things around you. Um, and she has the, I guess, the honor, the privilege, I don't know what the right words are. Um, the village that she worked in was right in the middle of the Ebola hot zone and they didn't have one single case of Ebola. Um, now, that's not science. It's anecdotal. It could be totally coincidence that she managed to sit in the middle of a hot zone and nobody catch anything. But she was the only person extolling these internal mechanisms that we're talking about, not wear a mask or distancing. She was talking about be happy, be healthy, don't live in fear, have gratitude, help your neighbors, you know, all this wonderful stuff that we're talking about. And she, uh, the village she was in managed to avoid Ebola, um, which, which is pretty awesome. So yeah, as I said, anecdotal, not science, but certainly there's stuff that points to it. Um, is there anything else that we haven't mentioned that you think we should offer, apart from 300,000 things? Yeah, yeah, 300,000 things, I guess, would be, would be the, <laughs> the response, right? But it's, uh, it's look after your environment, um, look out for how the stuff in your environment is making you feel and adjust it so that it makes you feel neutral or good just and be ruthless with your environment it's not you that's scared it's you that is being triggered by the stuff in your environment so cultivate your internal and external environment to help support you to feel the way that you want to feel whether that's eating lots of nutritious stuff and whether it's sleeping lots and all of those things don't stress too much about those things make yourself happy and contented and feel safe in your environment by checking what you're putting inside you and what's going on inside you and what's going on in your environment. And uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself to be doing the Joe Wicks thing or um, doing the, um, all of the healthy stuff that all of the stuff that everybody says you should be doing in isolation. Just do the stuff that makes you happy, but look at your environment for it being what makes you happy or not. Amazing, thank you so much. So to anybody watching, thank you so much. I know there's been hundreds of viewers on Facebook and we've had our own internal members here as well. So www.hackmankind.com. Um, everybody gets a 14 day free trial to hear more from amazing people like Ed and our other panelists. We have panelists in uh, legal, relationships, business, childhood and childcare, mindset mentality health nutrition etc and all of us are here along with a bunch of angels that do group support calls all of us are here basically to help with fear and information to walk away from fear and see opportunity and to seek information from talented people with decades in their in their aspects and there's other great movements out there you know the rise up challenge form the other day which i think is a phenomenal uh, movement there's 40 leaders in there but the, the difference with us to them is here you get access. 
here you get to ask these questions and actually get a one-on-one -on -one time with people that can really help you. So hatmancom it's a 14 day free trial. We'd love for anybody to, to join us. Uh, first line or frontline responders get free access for life. Um, so by that it's doctors, nurses, teachers, EMTs, police officers and firefighters. We're here to support you for free um, because it's the least we can do to thank you for what you're doing. Um, I think that's about it. The learning of the day uh, from us all was people rarely make bad choices. They simply forget to make choices at all. So our challenge to you for the day is make choices. Who do you want to be? What do you want your environment to be? What do you want the story of your health to be? Who do you want to support? Who do you want to love? Who do you want to spend time with? Just make choices. Ed, thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow morning for 20 minutes. Hopefully not of donkey kicks because I was terrible at those. <laughs> thank you. It's, it's been a pleasure. See you tomorrow morning. Thank you to everyone on Facebook and thank you to everyone of our members on Zoom as well. See you soon. Thank you. See you.